Hello, Adventure. Let's uh, jump in. I want to give you five hacks. Here's the deal. There is now, at last count, over 100,000 different factors that go in to whether or not you are going to see a post or not. Okay? So, like, 100,000 different factors, which means that it gets to be way too much. Well, fortunately, like, we've narrowed it down to about nine that are going to help you make sure that it shows up in the feed. Because, uh, again, the problem is only about one in five are going to ever show up. So what we have to do is we have this challenge of we have to make your post show up. And then once it shows up, then we have to actually get people to stop. You'll learn later that your post gets weighted by like certain, lots of different things. But one of the things that people think is if it gets the most number of likes or comments or shares. But here is one of the interesting things. If somebody's going through and they're scrolling and they stop on your post and they read it and they don't like comment or share and then they scroll to the next thing, guess what happens? It counts how long somebody stopped on your post and if people stop in the newsfeed, even though if they don't like comment or share, what it does is because what they realized was there's some things that you don't know how to respond to. Like for example, like let's say that somebody has some bad news. I'm not gonna put like, like, oh, sorry, that person died, like, and sometimes I don't know what to say, but like I definitely wanna stop and read it and read the comments. Well, now Facebook is saying, hey, we've now fixed the algorithm that takes the human condition into mind. And so that's what's really awesome is we just have to get people to stop. What are the ways to get stuff to actually show up in the algorithm? So the first one is what they call affinity, okay? And what affinity means is just looking at the idea of the closeness of a relationship. If they've recently engaged with your post, like, comment, share, then you have affinity with them. If I, if I have to pick one out of these five posts, Facebook really quick is going through and saying, which one is most likely for that person to like, comment, or share? So if you had to do this, like if you were the Facebook algorithm or the learning machine for it, if you had to guess, you know what you're gonna guess at? You're gonna guess, like I'm gonna go to a person that they've recently liked, commented, and shared because that gives a good indication that they like that stuff, so I'm gonna give them more of that stuff. They take a lot of things into account, but the biggest one is like the holy grail is what's called recent interactions. Recent interaction is what you're wanting. How do you create recent interaction? What people think is, oh, if I like and comment their stuff, then my stuff's gonna show up in their feed. No, that's not actually what happens. So if you have somebody who just broadcasts, right? They never really engage with anybody and they just treat Facebook like a TV station. I'm going to give you these five things. So the first one, reciprocity. Reciprocity just means that if you like other people's stuff, they're gonna probably like your stuff. If you wave to people, they generally wave back. If you like people's stuff, now sometimes they like back. I wanna give you a little hack here. This is an important idea. If you like somebody's post, they can't like that you liked it. Like a like is okay. So I think what you do is you just wanna go and like as many posts as you can because you think sometimes more is better. So if I just like a bunch of posts, like I'm hitting more people. But I want you to think about it is instead, like let's cut the number in half. Instead of maybe like liking a hundred people's posts, what if we only could comment on 25? Well, here's what happens. If I comment on somebody's post, guess what they can do? They can do two things now. Because again, when I like it, the only thing they can do is click on my name, go to my profile, which people hardly ever go to, right? It's under 14% of the time, and maybe like one of my things. So we're really kind of setting it up to not be a win. But if I leave a comment, a thoughtful comment, there's now two options. One, they can like my comment, which is very easy to do or they can comment back. What you have to realize is you think to get better engagement, they have to like your stuff. Well, they do, but it doesn't mean it's on your post. Do you understand that the algorithm 
It's the same way if I go and leave a thoughtful comment on Dan's post and Dan likes it or replies back, do you know that it weights it the same whether he liked or commented on my post? At least in the area of affinity. What Facebook does is go, hey, Dan liked something and had interaction, so now show Dan more of your posts. Okay, now here's the thing. If I have a comment and Dan didn't like or comment it, but like I left a comment on his and he liked or commented, it weights it the same for recent interaction. But do you know that if I go to another post that wasn't generated by me, wasn't generated by Dan, and I'm just being helpful, and I say, hey, at Dan, I thought you'd really like this. Isn't that hilarious? And then Dan gets a notification, and Dan likes my comment on somebody else's post. Guess what Facebook just did? Dan just had recent interaction with me. So the post doesn't have to be made by me. The post doesn't even have to be made by Dan. I can leave a comment and mention him anywhere on Facebook and he likes it or comments back, we just hack the algorithm. You think it's all about that you have to post, 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 post. You, you don't, like, it, it's not interaction with your post, it's an interaction with you. So that could be a comment anywhere. Number two is use lists. Now here's why lists are important. Because think about it, just because you, like I want you to get recent interaction, but don't you wanna get recent interaction with the right people? Like you want recent interaction with the right people. You don't want just anybody. Like if you have a restaurant, guess who you want to have recent interaction with? Foodies, food critics, a certain demo of the people who would like your product or service. Like that's something really, really important for you to understand. So what you have to do is you have to interact, right? So it's not like, I want you to think, so what I want to do is I want to say, let's say that I'm coaching a small group of people and I'm wanting more interaction from them. What I want to do is put those people, right? So if I have like some social media apprentices or apprentice I, what is it? Apprentices, apprentice I. What I want to do is I want to put those people in a list because what it allows you to do is I was explaining to like a, a pastor friend of mine and what I was saying is one of the lists that I think people do the worst at is customers, right? Because what they want is like, oh, I want somebody on my team. Oh, I got a customer. Now it's time to move on. And what I was saying is like in a nonprofit world, volunteers, it's huge to be able to have volunteers. Like I would make it a huge priority to put volunteers in a list if I worked with a nonprofit and I would make sure like potential volunteers and those volunteers that I'm thanking them, I'm leaving comments, I'm commenting on their stuff. Why? Because I want them to see my posts so they volunteer for that and that their friends start to see it. Like the biggest marketing for nonprofits ever would just be to put your existing volunteers into a list. You think that social media is about broadcasting. It's not about broadcasting, it's about listening. If you could start to listen more, to what your customers are saying, think about it. If you have people who've purchased from you and you have a list and they're just talking about their life and their frustrations, then guess what's gonna happen? If you're listening, you'll be able to have a solution for them. Lists are huge. One of the ones that I love, it's becoming my new favorite, is proactive searching. It's still not where Google is because I think, you know, out of the 1.2 billion people on Facebook, you're gonna want your stuff to show up in the newsfeed. You don't ever really want to be on the newsfeed yourself. If you're on the newsfeed, you're letting Facebook decide what you want to see. That's why what I want to do is I want you to use something like lists so that you don't miss somebody. So somebody that's, let's say that you have a hundred people that you're trying to recruit. What you're going to want to do then, put them in a list and make sure that you're engaging with them. You get that? Like, that's one of the biggest hacks. Like I see people, it's like, can you get a hundred people to support and and do your business. Okay, I'm gonna make a list. Why not then put them in a list? Then what you can do is if you engage with them, that's gonna be awesome. Make a Facebook list? Yes, not a Facebook group, because people would find out that they're in a group. A Facebook list is just for yourself. Nobody knows they're in the list. And, and here's one of the things. For example, Facebook tells you about birthdays. So there's kind of a myth, I'll jump ahead to number four, 
is there's kind of this myth and I've heard people say like, oh, well, when you engage with people on their birthday, then like they'll see more of your stuff. Theoretically, you're kind of getting the point, except for the point that everybody's doing it. And so because everybody's doing it, then that means nobody's doing it. What is maybe another occasion that somebody, it's really important to them, right? Yeah, so a lot of people are like, oh, birthdays. It's like, yeah, you're wasting your time with that. Let me say, the only reason I go through my birthday list is because I'm trying to knock people off my 5,000 friends to invite other people. Anniversaries, exactly. But anniversaries aren't gonna always show up in your timeline. You'll miss them. Here's what I do. I will type in the phrase in here. I typed in the phrase, friends who are posting about anniversary. And guess what happened? Here's one of my friends that is talking about their anniversary. Now, they're talking about a business university uh, anniversary, but you'll see wedding anniversaries. You'll see all of this thoughtful stuff, which these will not normally show up on my feed. And guess what? If you leave a thoughtful comment to somebody who is posting to say like, there's a friend of mine here that's just talking about anniversary of their, their baby and stuff like that. Like it's a great post, great picture. And if I leave a nice thoughtful comment, guess what they're probably gonna do? They're gonna remember it and they're gonna probably like it. And now I've created recent interaction or what I like to say, I've invited them into my adventure. For example, one of the ones that I do a lot is I'll put hospital or I'll put pray for. And so guess what happens? Anybody that is posting, friends who are posting about hospital or pray for, now my friends who are hurting, Facebook, I'm not letting Facebook decide for me what I see. I'm saying I want to see that. What about your friends who are maybe talking about health or diet or how to lose weight? Friends who are posting about that topic, right? And so proactive search in the coaching group, I did a whole event about it. I'm gonna be doing a lot more. I'm gonna do a whole series on it. For example, if you add friends through Facebook's people who, like if you add friends based upon Facebook's recommendations, I don't know why you're doing it. It's like the worst feature. But I can give you search phrases to type in there, like tell me friends of friends who live in a certain city, who like these certain things, and you'll find by doing the search, you actually get more mutual friends than what Facebook is showing you because the way they do it, it's just janky. How do you get engagement? And so how you get engagement is proactive searches. Like when people say, I hate Twitter, I'm like, no, you don't hate Twitter. You hate how you use Twitter. Like, oh, I don't like Facebook. No, you don't like gossip. You don't like political rants and people talking about religion that are supposed to be loving, but use it to divide people. That's what you hate. You don't hate Facebook. What you do, is I show you how to weed out all that stuff, put things in lists, do proactive searches, and you make Facebook amazing. Number four, I kind of covered it. You think birthdays help. Birthdays don't help, but one thing that I really like is the on this day feature. And so I'll post the link to it. What I like is I like to go there because what I like to see on, on this day is this, is it will tell me a couple things. One is if I have a, re if I have a memory with somebody, I can then go and share that to that person's timeline, or I can even just private message them. I am creating, again, it's not even about hacking the algorithm. I'm just like being a good human. But what it also does is it shows you the anniversary of when you become their friends. Wish them a happy, like, we're Facebook official, or it's our Facebook anniversary. Or I go, I have no idea who this person is. I can go to them and see some of their recent posts, and that's triggering, right? Because instead of you going through, let's say you had 5,000 friends, you can go through all of them and it just basically divides it up based upon the anniversary. So sometimes I use on this day to have like a bunch of offline conversations, which are great. Don't worry about the whole, like, I mean, wish people a happy birthday, not out of strategy, I guess is what I'm saying. Like if, when I hear like, oh, you go to people's birthday, wish them happy, no, just wish them a happy birthday. In fact, why don't you just like go and send them a card? Do that. Don't have happy birthday be a strategy. And it doesn't work because everybody else is doing it. And you 
don't ever remember who all wish you a happy birthday because as an experiment one time, it was a while ago, it was not thoughtful. I just randomly changed my birthday and then all the people that wish you a happy birthday, like if you're having a down day, let me just say this. If you're having a bad day, just change your birthday to that day and um, then you'll feel better. It's not thoughtful, you shouldn't do it. Draw people into your post, that's number five. Draw people into your post. Now, this is a double-edged sword. If I tag Dan, in a post, what I'm essentially doing, he's getting a notification that lets him know, hey, he was tagged in a post. Now, all of you should have timeline review set. If he approves that post, that post gets a little bit of a boost to the people that Dan and I overlap. Because what Facebook is doing is saying, hey, I gotta choose between these posts. Here's this one and this one, but you're friends with Dan and John Eric, so that double bonus, here you go, tagging, can be helpful, thoughtful tagging. The way I do it is this, tagging is like tag you're it, meaning I can touch you, which means you were in the photo, you were there. I'm posting a picture about our adventure and you and I, we were there, we took a selfie, I tagged you in it because you were right there. For you to go and write a post that has nothing to do with me and just use it as a strategy and tag 78 other people, what you're really doing, this has nothing to even, like there's something that affects the algorithm. It doesn't, like where it doesn't matter with the algorithm is just everybody else doesn't wanna tell you, like you're a spammer and we start to avoid your post and you'd be surprised at how many people have unfollowed you uh, because I do it to you. Mentioning is different. Mention is like about. So when you do that, it put at sign. Mentioning would be something like, um, mentioning would be something like I write a post and then I'm mentioning at Dan, isn't that cool? Or at somebody, right? Like it's about them. Now here's the big difference. When you tag somebody, it sets all these notifications and automatically like now anybody that comments on that and it just like creates such a hassle, but mentioning doesn't. Also the great thing about mentioning is when you mention somebody, it will show up in search on and off Facebook, which is great for SEO and other things. So for example, there was somebody who was watching a training about something I was doing and they should have mentioned me. Like somebody says, oh, I love your training, John Eric. Like, no, you mentioned me, you did it perfectly. That's exactly what you should have done. You shouldn't tag me when you're in bed because what it just said was, hey, I'm in bed with John Eric and you were not in bed with me. You were watching training. Tagging and mentioning. Now, the reason you wanna be careful with tagging is this. Mentioning people don't really get upset. Like mentioning, I mention people in the post or in the comments. So realize in the comments, it's the same thing. So I wrote a post a, uh, a while ago about families. It just really was like, like a great post about families. Then in the comments, what I did is I would mention in the comments, I would say, hey, at Dan, this post reminded me of your family. What was awesome about that is he got that notification I brought him into the post. So because of that, like I'm being thoughtful. Just be thoughtful about tagging and mentioning. Tagging is generally they were there. Don't use it a lot. Mentioning, that's where, hey, I thought you would like this. I'll mention, hey, at Dan, you'd really like this shirt. And if he likes it or comments back, see what I did? I invite him, it didn't have to be about my post. So you wanna mention a lot. Tagging, be very, very careful, but when you thoughtfully tag, it will boost your post. Now, here's the double-edged sword with it. People will unfollow you, because I do it. I mean, I didn't unfriend you, but I'm not seeing your post. I basically muted you. If somebody removes the tag or hides the post, guess what happens? Your entire post, not just that post, but your entire score goes down. I see like, hey, I don't wanna see this post and I hide it. Like if somebody reports the post or they hide it or they're even removing that, what Facebook is saying is going, it's backing up and going, oh wait, pe this person isn't being thoughtful because people are removing themselves from the tag or people are hiding the post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna put you in probation because you're, I don't like your stuff. That's where the problem is. People will tag some people, right? Which can be helpful if you thoughtfully do it. You overdo it, you actually could really hurt yourself. Tag and mention are, are very different. Those are just five quick ways. Hope you guys love this. And I will post in hackthealgorithm.com. I'll post all the information in there. So thanks for tuning in and 
your adventure begins right now.